Hello sewing friends, today's video is going to start a little bit differently. Get yourself a nice drink, sit down, make yourselves comfy and I want to tell you a story. So imagine this, it's midnight, it's the middle of summer, it's been a really hot day, too hot. You've gone to bed, but you couldn't sleep. And so you've decided to get up and to go out into the garden. Well, to your surprise, there's a gentle breeze blowing. So you find a comfy chair and you sit down. And the garden is full of the smell of the roses and the jasmine. It's nice and quiet. You look around and you can see that the colours of the flowers have altered magically almost. They're now glowing from inside, an internal glow. And you look at that garden against that blackness and you look at those colours and you think, I want to make that quilt, that midnight garden quilt. And that's what this video is all about. So that's the start of it. Which is the complete opposite of how my garden looks today. Not to worry. These wet days will soon pass and summer will be upon us and hopefully we'll have some of those lovely nights again in the garden. And I think that's where this idea first came to me a few years ago, really. And I've been thinking about it on and off, making this midnight garden quilt and looking for fabric while I've been out and about, collecting odd bits, thinking oh, that might work, but not really seeing a range until I came across this Bethany Salt range and I'll share that one with you now. And the collection is called Paisley Peacock by Bethany Salt. So there's a grey background with lots of paisley patterns on and there's blues and pinks and purples and oranges and then we have these lovely peacocks on a teal background, again with reds and oranges, navy blues. And we have a soft blue with yellows, another teal with peacocks, and then we have this coral with orange, dark teal, reds. So that's the start of the quilt collection. And when I found that Bethany Salt Paisley Peacock line in the shop, they had three fat quarter bundles left, so I bought all three. They did have yardage, and so at that point I had no idea what I wanted to do design-wise in the quilt. I knew I wanted to use it in the Midnight Garden quilt, um, and I bought yardage in four of the five samples in the bundle. I didn't buy any yardage of this one, but I did with the other four. When you are buying a limited range, you do need to add extra fabrics. So I pulled lots from my stash, more than I will need, but I know that it will work together somehow. I couldn't see that I would use all of these, but I think it might be nice to use quite a few. So Midnight Garden. So I'm just going to put all of these fabrics together, leave them out as a collection. And so there's my fabric laid out on the shelves, ready to be chosen. I'm under no illusions. I know this is going to be quite difficult to try and put that emotion into textiles. And if it doesn't quite match up to what I'm hoping it will, then I can always make another one. And in this quilt, I've decided to approach it slightly differently. I don't know why, really. <laughs> Bit of a 
old lady crisis, who knows? But what I thought I would do is to design the first block, make that, then design the next block, make that, and so on. It's not a way that I usually work. Usually I will design the whole quilt, unless it's an improv quilt, and I know where the thing is going. But on this occasion, I don't. It's a bit like having one of these mystery sew-alongs that I've seen on YouTube. And, but it's a mystery for me, <laughs> the creator. <laughs> Never too old to learn or try new things, are we? So that's what I'm doing here. So I'll show you how I've got on so far. And this is the first block. It sits in the middle of the quilt. It looks quite dark on there because of the colours that I have available to use. But let me show you the fabrics. And that's my selection for that central block. I'm hoping that the yellow and the green lift it. So remember it is a midnight garden. So I'll put this together step by step and we'll have a look and see what it looks like. And here are the details that you'll need if you want to make block A and the stages that I made it in. So three stages, the variable star in the center with a ring around that and then a ring around that. There are three inch squares and three inch half square triangles with a five and a half inch square feature block in the middle. And so I've just constructed that four by four block and that forms the centre, a variable star. So the middle is a five and a half inch square and I fussy cut that to try and get that peacock in the middle. And then the outsides are three inch half square triangles and I've joined those together to form the points of the orange star. And then in the corner we have three inch squares and again I fussy cut those so we have peacocks. And I think looks quite nice for the first step. So I'll put that together and we'll move on to the next one. And it comes together like that. And my next task is to sew these four rows together. So we have the paler blue on the outside, half square triangles in the centre and then we have the green touching and we'll join those together. And so I have two rows with four blocks put together like that. And then in the other two rows, I added a three inch square green block and those are the cornerstones. And these will fit around the central part of the block. Now I'll sew the bottom onto the block and the top and then I'll put the sides on with these three inch green blocks. And that's the second row of the quilt complete. And that's it sewn together. And now we have one final row to complete that block. And so I'm going to construct four strips. Again, we have the pale blue on the outside, the navy blue solid in the center. And then we have these lovely green with a navy blue and a solid three inch square on the outside of that. And then two of those rows will have this gray backed fabric. We'll put those together. Oh, look how that's come together. That lime green is really popping. Okay, let's put this around the middle block and we'll have a look. And there we are, that's the first block complete. I've used four out of the five from the Bethany Salt range. I'm about to add the fifth one in the corner blocks, but I think that's looking quite dark and mysterious. And it measures 21 inches square. And that's what block B looks like. And you can just see where I've marked four blocks to sit on the points of each corner. I'm going to do that one next. And this is the fabric that I've selected. So there's a tiny little bit of the navy blue solid used. There's some navy blue with a soft pink rosebud used as the background. So the reason I chose these two fabrics as the background for the quilt is because I wanted quite a deep contrast. So in the Midnight Garden, when you're looking around, some areas seem almost black, don't they? But others, there's a sort of gray looking where they catch little bits of light that are reflected either off the flowers or perhaps the moon. So I wanted that. I didn't want a whole solid 
background. I thought that might deaden it a little bit. And then a tiny amount of this feature orange, a slither of the green, some more of the grey, introduction now of the coral, some yellow, and then a feature block again, five and a half inches, the same as we used in the middle block. Oh, I'll show you how we put this block together now. Well, the first step for block B is to take a feature five and a half inch square and surround it with pink and yellow half square triangles. So you join the yellow half square triangles together, put those on the top and the bottom, and then you add grey squares, three inch squares, to the corners and sew those to the sides. And this is how I left my room last night. So I have block B still to put together today, but I stopped for an interlude for the next part of the design process. Quite an interesting way to work. And that's the fabric layout for the inner of that block, block B. I am using a steel grey cotton thread for this project, but for sewing these yellow half square triangles together, I've just changed to white and that's it sewn together. And now it needs its edge to fit nicely next to the center. And the last part of block B, the outer ring, looks like that. And you can just see here, there's a little note, directional, that there are two gray and blue half square triangles each side of that bud. And the rest is the darker background. Now for the corner of this outside row, we need to create four rosebuds. And I'll show you how to do that. And so to keep all my seams nice and straight, what I've done is cut a strip of the orange, which is two inches wide, and a strip of the green, which is one and three quarter inches wide, and sewed those together, the length of the fat quarter. And then I have a strip of the green, which is one and three quarter inches wide. I press the orange and green seam and then cut those into two inch blocks, press them open and sew a slither of green onto the side. So it looks like that. And when I place my three inch ruler on top, you can see there's a tiny slither that needs to be trimmed off. Here's a little tip I'd like to share with you if you're new to quilting and you are trimming back multiples of the same block. If you use the lines on your cutting mat, so I want to cut these at three inches square. So I've cut three sides of these squares and now I've just lined up this side here on all three in each row and so it's just a matter now of running the rotary blade down that side of the ruler, lifting up the ruler, popping it onto the next row and so on. So checking the lines, we're good to go, placing the ruler on top, slicing up, moving along to the last but one. And then on to the last row. Now we have trimmed all of those and the block looks like that. So it's three inches by three inches. And that's a little reminder of the sizes for those little rose buds or flower bud blocks. And that's what the block will look like when I put the edge around. That directional block in the centre is causing a little bit of an issue with the navy blue cornerstones because I have to make sure they're facing the inside of the quilt. But apart from that, there's nothing there too scary. So I'll sew that together and we'll have a look and see what that looks like. Those are all the details for block B. So you can see there isn't room to put block A and B on the wall together. I will lay them out on the floor to show you. But you can see here the peacocks are all pointing outwards. So they're pointing away from the centre peacock. And that navy blue corner comes together to bring that darkness. But this is how block B will look when it's in the quilt. So the navy blue corners touch block A and they radiate out. And if I can try and get you a little close up, very pretty. 
And now on to my next task, and that will be to create block C. And block C will fit in the gaps between block B and around block A. The background will have a combination of navy blue and the pink background to tie those in. And I'm also going to incorporate some new fabric pieces. Also a Bethany Salt line, and I'll show you those. And this is Enchanted Wings by Bethany Salt. I've had these pieces in my stash for quite a while but I think they're going to look nice in block C and I'm also going to grab your sunglasses introduce this orange and green I think it will work and this is my fabric selection for block C so the background navy blue and the navy blue with a pink bud that will be in and then we have the teal peacock yellow blue pink <laughs> blue, orange, green, definitely not less is more in this block. I think it will work, we'll find out. And so I haven't got a finished design to work with and so what I'm going to do is to create a couple of blocks, put those together, make a video and share that with you. So for this week there were blocks A and B and all the details are, that you need if you want to make them will be on my community page. And then next week, I'll make some more blocks and I'll add those to my community page. Um, if you're thinking of doing a quilt along, <laughs> I'd probably wait because this could be, you know, not something you want to make at the end. <laughs> it could happen. I don't think it will, but it could. So I'd wait until I'd finish the quilt before you start quilting along with me, just in case. And so I have now designed block C. So I'm going to cut that fabric up and I'm going to film that and make that quilt for you, ready for next week. But before I do that, there's a little bit of a question and answer thing I'd like to add to the end of this video and the question came from Dana and Dana's question related to this quilt from last week she wanted to know how I managed to get all of the bees flying in the same direction so you can see they are flying away from the center so there they go they're all going that way I've got to say, Dana, I had just scraps of fabric and it was as much by luck of the design as anything else that I was managing to get these uh, two and a half inch strips from that fabric. But there is also a little bit of a design, not cheat or hack, but just a process to follow. If you are short of fabric, like I was in this quilt, look and see where the eye is drawn first. So it's towards the centre here, going out. So on the centre of the bees, each line, I've tried to get those, a complete bee flying out. They're not all the same. There's a little bit of bum <laughs> on that one. This one's a little bit lower, but it's all I could manage with the fabric scraps I had. And you can see here that because I use the courthouse steps method of constructing this quilt, all of these are coming out that way and all of these bees are flying out that way. And to be honest, in the corners, they're not that great, there are little bits missing, but your eye doesn't really focus on that. That's the swarm. And swarms get a bit complicated, don't they? So I hope that's an answer to that, Dana. And that's it for this week. So I'm going to get on with that block and I'd like to thank you very much for spending time with me. I hope that you are all well. Please take good care of yourselves and I'll see you again next week. Bye.